So you decided to join the Navy. You talked to a recruiter already by now, and the recruiter signed you up for SCCF. You have no idea what SCCF is, but the recruiter made it sound pretty cool. The video is going to be pretty comprehensive, but it's going to cover five things that you need to know of what you got yourself into. Number one, what is SCCF? SCCF is Submarine Electronic Computer Field. That program breaks down into four different jobs. You have electronics technician communications, electronics technician navigation, which is what I did. You have sonar technician and you have fire control technician. Pretty technical rates. In basic enlisted submarine school after boot camp in Grand, Connecticut, you'll be able to choose which one of those four you get. You have paper, has your name on it, and the instructor says pick two jobs. Your first choice, your second choice. If your first choice is not available, you get your second choice. And I went into the Navy already being familiar with electronics and electronic repair. So I decided to choose electronics technician communications for my top one. And then for second pick, I chose navigation. I didn't get communications. I got navigation. A job with the foundation for the future is really what I kind of figured I'd do. How long are the days for school? Now, it's a kind of a multi-part question. It's just like a typical school day. You know, start off at 7, you end at 3.30. You have your duty days where you do that every six days. You have to stay awake 24 hours. You know, you could take a nap in between. And then you stand watch. You're assigned and you're trained and you're qualified to stand watch at a building like an entry entry access point. You check everyone's ID as you're coming in. Check everyone's liberty card as you're coming in. Any incidents that happens in the barracks, you're the first point of contact. And then you communicate with the duty chief, petty officer. And then that person will contact the ship's duty officer, so on and so forth. Number three, will you be stuck with the roommate? The answer is... Yes, your best barracks, basically in the submarine school, your barracks are mixed in with people that are already coming out of the race school, getting ready to go to the fleet, but have to go through BESS. And they're really relaxed. The instructors are not really strict with cleanliness, room inspections, they're really lenient. However, the downside to it is if you have a dirty roommate, roommate's gonna be a very pain in the ass to clean up after. Room's gonna stink. And it's going to be up to you to make sure that it stays clean. After you get out of the basic submarine school, you go into ATT. Barracks a little bit cleaner. The instructors are a little bit more tightly knit. They get to know the students on more one-on-one -on -one base. And then your room inspection is going to be a lot more thorough. It gets easier to keep a room clean because there's already an expectation. And between BESS, ATT, and Techno, which is the, after this, you're going to be with two other roommates. Your roommate's going to be the same thing. They're going to be in your same program. And your inspections are going to be focused on cleanliness. Then you get sent to your A school. You pick your A school rate from best. You have your top two. And then you go to that respective job. Not specifically the people that are in your class or in your rate, but in the A school pipeline. And then it's common for people to be moved in and moved out like a month later, moved in and moved out. And you build like a really good bond with your roommates. By then... Every everyone that's been troublesome has been filtered out. So you're pretty much left with people who have a lot of common interests with you. A lot of people don't have a car and they like to play video games. And that's what I did. I play video games. I didn't really want to buy a car in Connecticut because I wasn't going to stay there. Number four, is there plenty to do there? So you're bored in your barracks room right now. You don't know what to do. You're tired of video games, tired of your, your roommates. So you don't have a car. MWR, which is Morale Welfare Recreation, they have a shuttle which takes people from base to Crystal Mall. Crystal Mall is a cool spot to go to unwind, stretch your legs, walk around, buy stuff. It's a mall, video games, clothing. You can go there in your uniform, not recommended. However, Liberty, like they call it Liberty Alpha or something. You are required to stay in your uniform and then you have to be back at like midnight or something like that. But after your restrictions are lifted from Liberty, you can dress up in civilian clothes. I recommend you actually get a civilian outfit, t-shirt, pants, shoes, Something that doesn't put a target on your back that you're in the Navy. Because there's so many idiots that wear like a military undershirt with a Navy peacoat jacket, jeans, and they either wear their Navy boots or their Navy running shoes. Look like idiots. And you guys are everywhere and you guys don't realize how stupid you look. Yeah, you guys might be in a pinch and don't have money. I get that. But when you, pants cost like less than 30 bucks. The Navy Exchange sells all the clothing items you need. Even if it's a different shirt that even says Navy on it, which is a lot better, in my opinion, than wearing your undershirt. Because it makes you look like shit, And people don't realize it, but you look like shit. There's also casinos. Two casinos. You have Foxwood Casino. You have Mohegan Sun. The security at these casinos is really tight. So if you go to a casino, you act drunk, you're going to get in trouble. 
you're going to get kicked out of the casino and you're going to get bl not blacklisted, but you're going to get cut off maybe for that night until you come back. But the security cameras are like everywhere, even though they don't, you can't obviously see them. You have a place called Bluff Point. It's a good little, like a, like hiking trail slash running path. The mall, you have your theaters. If you have a car, there's a auto hobby shop where you can go work on your car, like a dollar an hour or something. Cause you rent the space. They also allow you to borrow tools. There's a lot of places to go hike. There's a lot of places to go camping. Hiking or camping, I didn't really get into that. Farmer's markets. There's a Target. There's a Walmart. A lot of restaurants out there. There's Bamboo House, which is my personal favorite when I lived there. Um, Pizza Hut, obviously. You got people that deliver food to base, so you don't got to go anywhere. You just got to call in your order. However, you can eat on base. You could eat at the, at the galley on base, and it's free. There's people that stay in the barracks. During the weekends, they'll just eat junk food nonstop. They never leave their barracks room. It's very unhealthy. The food that is provided for you is very nutritious. It's free. And it's like going to a buffet line. You're there. You could have seconds. You could have thirds. You could sit there and watch the game until the game ends. There's always something on TV to watch. It's very, I guess it's a relaxing environment. It's like a neutral zone. I recommend making friends that are not in the military. Go off base, mingle, make some friends. I don't know how you're going to do it. Maybe hit up a farmer's market be talkative to people. Don't be afraid. There's a skate park down the street. But, you know, if you ride a bicycle at the skate park, they'll call the cops on you because the people there are kind of stupid. But the police are really understanding. They understand that you're not from there. And they're really, they're really polite, you know, as a, compared to LAPD. I was lucky. I had a couple of friends that lived in California that I met. And they ended up living in Connecticut. So then when I went to Connecticut, we were friends. There's a place called the Rustic Cafe. One of the owners is from San Diego, really chill place, local vibe, very homey. They have food there, they have drinks there. And for 4th of July, one year, they actually had fireworks and we were allowed to pop fireworks. I'm not sure if that's illegal or not. I hope they don't get in trouble, but uh, it was definitely off their property. It's definitely out there. There's a lot of apple orchards, um, a lot of them, again, on private property. But once you make friends with locals, some of the friends that I've made there were like eighth generation and they've, they've owned like farmland that was not used and a giant house their barn that where they kept their firewood was bigger than most of the houses in los angeles so number five was what the galley was like because somebody asked me if they can eat food there or do they have to pay for their food and i said no there's a galley on base you go from your barracks room you literally walk like a quarter of a mile and you have your your id card and all you do is you punch in your id card the light turns green, says that you're eligible because they scan something in your record. And then you go into the galley. You know, you're in there, you're in line, you grab a tray, you grab your dishes, your utensils, then you just start piling food. Whatever the food is that they're serving, it's all good. They make it there fresh. Sometimes it's frozen, sometimes it's powdered, but they do their best. Sometimes they, lo they source local ingredients. But as far as like the, the meats, the meats are all frozen, they come in frozen. Part of it says that they got to get you used to the food that they're going to serve you on a submarine. I mean, high calorie, high fat diet because it's, you know, they need to maintain freshness of, or I, I want to say freshness. Or I would rather say consumability of the food on a submarine for it to last 90 days. So they got to get that kind of food already. They use that same food for the cuisine on the submarine. Same recipes are also shared on the submarine. So you're already familiar with the stuff that they have. Stuff like chipped beef. We call it shit on a shingle, toasted bread, chipped beef, um, soups. You got minestrone soup, you got clam chowder, you got chicken soup, vegetable soup. Now, if you want to be vegetarian, you can. It's, it's a lot easier than being vegan. You could definitely be a vegetarian on the boat. Those times where they served pork chop looked disgusting and I refused to eat it. So then they eat other stuff, you know, there's always steamed veggies like or there's potatoes. Now, if you want to be vegan, they put butter and cheese in everything. Sometimes people get creative and they want to make mashed potatoes more creamier, so then they'll put cheese or they'll put milk in it. It's cool. The dock on board has what they call lactase enzymes, so you take that, it's supposed to help you. Didn't really help me much, but there's freshly made coffee, not fresh coffee, freshly made coffee on, on the boat as well as on the galley. Oh, by the way, the galley has drink machines, like fountain drinks, like Coke, Sprite, Fanta, etc. Salt, seltzer water. They got coffee. They got juices. Uh, the breakfasts are pretty standard. It's like continental breakfast at a hotel. 
If you've ever been to a hotel, had a continental breakfast, exactly like you would find breakfast, you know, pancakes, hash browns, waffles, you know, mini sausages or sausage patties. Lunch is lunch, you know, nothing exciting. However, during the summer, they open up the barbecue pit and then they cook outside burgers, uh, steaks, lobster tail, clams or oysters. Like think of like a Southern comfort style barbecue and they'll have that. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. The experiences that you'll experience there, obviously you won't be able to find about it through the internet. You just kind of have to experience it when you get there. As far as preparation, before you leave for boot camp, have like a grab bag set aside in a box ready to ship out. Put like some pants in there, some socks, some underwear if you want. You can buy new ones. Stamps, you know, people love to send letters. So in this box that you leave at home, you don't have an address to send it to. So you have it there, prepaid shipping or have a account like UPS. When you get to Bess, you will have the opportunity to call back home and have someone ship it out for you. And if you don't have family or whatever, a business will. Or you could even have it, how I would say, on hold somewhere. But if you have an agreement with somebody, please make sure that they honor that agreement. Because it's funny, most people think that there's not honesty out there, but there really is, especially if you're sacrificing yourself for the military. And that's kind of it, I think. You're not going to need to spend a lot of money while you're in sub school because you're just going to be learning full time. Really want to stay out of trouble? Don't get a DUI. Don't knock up a girl that lives in Connecticut. There's going to be a lot of girls in Connecticut who want to leave Connecticut and they see you as their ticket out of there. So really be cautious about people that you meet. You're going to listen to stories about, I met this girl at a strip club and now we're married. That's a very common thing. People will get married after four weeks of knowing each other and then they have a horrible marriage. But the girl lives in Hawaii and she's getting half of that sailor's paycheck. Something to think about. You know, this is the best I could kind of come up with. I only wanted to keep it within five things. I'm going to try to trim the fat, so to speak. Work hard, get through that program, get to your submarine. Life gets way better once you get to your submarine and after you get qualified. It it, it really becomes a family on on the ship. And there's people still that I'm more closer to with them than the people that are in my own family. So that's kind of speaks for itself. But uh, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for leaving comments. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I hope this was a helpful video for you guys. And I'll see you again.